Hi, welcome back to the MyGo YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna take a comprehensive look at adding UV to your grow to improve potency. Well, the studies have all pointed towards its UVB. That's the uh, lower wavelength form of UV. It's the higher energy, lower wavelength form and is responsible for um, tanning and therefore can be a little bit dangerous to deal with. Um, it also is generally blocked out by glass, so is not generally available. Um, we've, I've tested lots of HID sources, that's HPS, ceramic metal halide, that type of stuff. And um, the glass in those bulbs tends to block the UVB, but still let through the UVA. Um, but this is no good to us. I've also tested um, UV LEDs, and these are quite expensive per watt. Uh, especially c compared to uh, ones that emit visible light. The UVAs are somewhat effective in the sense that they do output UVA and are um, okay in terms of value for money. They're still quite expensive per watt, but they're no good to us because they're not emitting the UV that we want. Um, the UVB LEDs are very expensive. A 0.2 watt UVB LED I purchased in the 285 nanometer range, so right in the lower range of UVB, was 50 euros for 0.2 watts, and I could barely detect um, any output from it. So um, UV uh, LEDs are, are not suitable for uh, the purposes, um, for our purposes here. Just speaking of UVB particularly, it is dangerous um, to be around it for too much, the same way as sunlight. So if you are, um, well, first of all, you, you would set it up so that it, it, it times on and off when you are not in the grow room, ideally. If you do have to be in the grow room at the same time that the bulbs are on, just note that if you're even just 20 centimeters or eight inches away from, from example, this um, Agromax um, fluorescent tube, uh, you will be reading uh, nine or 10 times uh, midday um, sunlight uh, that sort of level nine or ten times sunlight level at midday um, and uh, you know you should wear eye protection you can wear acrylic perspex or glass glasses and they will all protect your eyes uh, which are particularly sensitive um, and then cover your skin minimize the time you're in there keep a distance and just be safe around it uh, so I did, um, after testing the LEDs, I tested HID, as I said, no real sources of UVB there. I then went on to test UVB um, fluorescence, and I got the ones immediately available to me. I happen to have uh, reptiles at home, well, my son does, and uh, I help look after them. And we use these exoterra bulbs, which uh, this one is the UVB 200. And as you would hope, from something that is going in very close to a little live creature, these um, emit some UVB, but uh, are nowhere near as intense, intense as these um, specialized UVB grow lights. So these are okay, they emit a little bit. I have some of them in the test results at the end of the video for reference, but um, far less output from the um, uh, these types of reptile bulbs than what we want for growing. They're not ideal. You could use them, but they're not ideal, just because the low output. Next thing just to note is uh, UVB fluorescence. If we look at them, they are you know, obviously round and they emit light in, in all directions. Um, and we would, uh, in, in terms of trying to get this radiation uh, this UV light down to our grow area. If this is our target grow area, for example, we have to hold it, you know, it's about 40, 40 centimeters away from the grow, 50 centimeters, um, so we don't burn the plants with UV. And this means only a small arc, you know, 25% or so, about a quarter of the light, the radiation, the UVB radiation, is gonna be directed down onto the grow. So that's only 25% efficiency. So we need to use reflective surfaces to get the UVB down. So it's curious to me that a lot of these manufacturers don't provide reflectors, which is very strange. I don't, I don't understand it at all. Next thing is, not all surfaces reflect UVB light. So 
Um, your typical reflector is maybe white um, or mylar lined. Um, so tent lining, for example, is mylar with a plastic coating. The aluminium that's in the mylar is fine, but the plastic coating over it absorbs the um, UVB photons, so are no good. Um, white is no good. Bare metallic surface is what you want. Uh, bare metallic aluminium surface, so kitchen foil will do. If you get, have a, a cheap reflector, just uh, the bare anodized aluminium surface or non anodized will do perfect. For my little test reflector, which I have here, I made one large enough to fit uh, three and four foot fluorescent tubes in here, such as the soda cure one. This one I used Firmafoil, which is the aluminium foil used for ducting. The way to check if your foil is plastic lined or not, because it's not always obvious, is to get your meter, multimeter, set it to impedance, so you're measuring resistance, the one that gives you the little beep when uh, you touch the electrodes, and just measure so you touch the foil in two places and if it beeps then you know that it's bare um, because it's conducting across the surface there's not plastic insulating it and you can use it so I use this just as good as the uh, reflective surface from the reflector just as good as the foil they were all very similar when I tested them so you don't have to be too fussy there uh, just on that note, one of the disappointments in testing was um, the soda cure bulb, or tube. So the soda cord, cord tube, one of the features of the bulb is that it's supposed to have an internal reflector. So um, you're only supposed to um, have the bulb in this orientation, so it's coming down this way, because this top surface here has a white lining on it. Internally, I'm guessing, it seems so. But it doesn't reflect. So the output from this bulb, uh, this tube, is far, far less than the other ones I tested with the reflector, um, which is very disappointing. I don't really get it. The, the, the aluminium foil or aluminium, bare aluminium reflector is dollars to produce um, and could improve the efficiency of these guys by, uh, by three times, uh, improve the output by three times. So yeah, I was... Uh, <laughs> Frustrated and um, yeah, thought that was quite strange, to say the least. Uh, next thing to note is about this finish on the bulbs, and uh, most of them you'll note are white. The white is actually a phosphorus coating internally, and um, you can uh, you know you have more phosphorus on the coating, more of the um, UVB photons generated inside are going to be converted to light. So there's mercury in the tube, plasma goes into the tube, ignites the mercury, the mercury emits photons and those photons bounce off the phosphorus and then generate light. Uh, there's lots of phosphorus in normal, um, in regular uh, fluorescent tubes for uh, ordinary lighting. In these there's much less in these UV B ones there's much less and so some of the photons produce UV produce light but most of them are quite a significant amount of them go through and uh, emit UVB um, so you get a little bit of light they glow sort of a dull blue um, but uh, you're getting UVB through them as well black lights are these guys with a filter on the outside to block whatever um, uh, visible light is illuminated and so they take that dark blue look but they can emit they can emit the same amount of UVB or equivalent amounts to uh, the white ones what else have we got uh, test results I guess so um, I tested all of the fixtures in my homemade reflector I used the uh, specialist UVB solar meter, measures in microwatts per centimeter squared of UVB. 100 microwatts per centimeter squared is daylight. 
uh, midday sun there or thereabouts and um, you know that would go down to about 20 for uh, cloud cloud cover so it's, uh, 100 is, is kind of what we're looking for get that average across our grow area to replicate the sun um, and 100 microwatts per centimeter squared is equivalent to um, one watt of UVB per meter squared. So that's what we're looking for in terms of our output um, is those measurements. So test results. First one up uh, for reference really is the UVB um, bulb by Solicure. It's uh, out, total output was 27 watts and the total, or sorry, total power consumed was 27 watts and total UVB output was one watt, so the equivalent of 4%. Oh, slightly disappointing that, given that it's sold as a high output specialist one. Next was the Philips. This is sort of a medical, uh, you can see for medical use only, um, UVB bulb, just got it really to, um, it's called the TL, um, broad brand. Um, this is twice, over twice the price, it's 20 watts and over twice the price of the Agromax, but it is a very highly efficient fixture. So the 20 watt fixture outputs, uh, where is my figure, it's gone, uh, for 12% uh, of UVB, so 2.4 watts in total, so that's excellent, thank you, cover. 2.4 meters squared that would be a 5 by 5 with one fluorescent mm -hmm. these little two foot agromax pure uvs are outstanding in my view they are only 24 watts but output a whacking three watts of uvb or 12 percent and they're a lovely little fixture and they're very reasonable about 25 dollars each um, don't come with a reflector again it's a disappointment but you can make them pretty easy but uh, yeah really really good how to use them as i said uh, you want one watt per meter squared of uvb output and um, so you can figure that out for yourselves uh, if this if this one bulb does three watts um it can cover a whole a total of um three meters squared um to apply them, you only need to, the UV will actually uh, slow down growth, as in uh, gaining mass of the plants. So it's not photosynthetic in that sense. So you don't want to use it um, while the plants are still growing in earnest. Um, so you really only should use them in the last couple of weeks of flower to improve the potency. And the guidance is um, on and off for an hour, a couple of times during the lighting cycle will be enough to stimulate the uh, oil and resin production and improve potency. I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, any recommendations for further testing or information you require, please leave them below. And um, yeah, take care. Bye now.